So I used to have hair. <laughs> really, this was me my senior year of high school. 18 years old and a full head of hair. <laughs> but six months later, this was also me. In this picture, I had just been diagnosed with cancer a second time and needed a, a bone marrow transplant in order to have a chance at survival. You can actually see me holding the bone marrow in that bag there that would eventually save my life. And just weeks before this photo was taken, I discovered a secret that I'm going to share with you here today that can revolutionize your life. Have you ever been told to follow your heart or go with your gut? Have you ever been asked, what is your instinct telling you to do? We've all heard some version of this idea countless times in our lives. Follow your heart really is a bit of a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's true. As a matter of fact, I've discovered that following your heart is so true that it's a cornerstone of the human experience itself. Those of us that know how to follow our heart and have the courage to do so will lead unequivocally happier and more successful lives as a result. And this is an idea that traverses all of the human story. Philosophy, theology, psychology, even pop culture all have some take on this very idea. It's an idea that's so common, the most recognizable names in all of human history have some take on it. Maybe with different words, but all with the same basic message. Following your heart is the very definition of what it means to be human. Take philosophy, for example, Aristotle, one of the founders of Western thought, who wrote in the third century BC about this idea of divine intelligence and how all humans are intuitive by our nature. Centuries later, another philosopher and a theologian, Thomas Aquinas, would write about this very same idea, saying that it's from our human intuition that all human knowledge proceeds. Both Aristotle and Aquinas discovered the importance of following our heart. But following your heart has also been seen in, in modern business. Elon Musk believes in his gut that the future of the human race itself depends on a company that can create a reusable rocket. So he founded SpaceX, and after three failed rocket attempts, the company was on the verge of bankruptcy. He had to decide whether to use the last of his own money to fund a fourth and final attempt or fold the company and walk away safely. He went with his gut. They funded that fourth rocket, and it was their first ever successful launch. Today, the company is valued at $100 billion, and they just sent the world's first all-civilian spacecraft into orbit. Elon Musk learned the importance of following his heart. But there's examples of following your heart in, in modern science as well. A study out of Tel Aviv University found that people who followed their passion for their career had <clears throat> a competitive advantage, regardless of any inherent talent in their chosen field. What's even more interesting is that in that same study, they found that when people followed their passion for their career and made less money as a result, they still had a greater likelihood, like, uh, the greater likelihood of happiness and success. Imagine a world where you're making less money, but living a happier and more successful life. And that's the beauty of this idea. It's that even in the eyes of what some might consider failure, True happiness and success can be found. There's a story I like to share about a name we've all heard who, before he was known as a worldwide success, he was actually known as a worldwide failure. It's about Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. And after founding Apple in his parents' garage, the company was on a roll. By the mid-'80s, they were introducing this wild new idea of personal computers to mainstream America, but they needed their next product. Apple, its CEO and, and board of directors, had one idea, but Steve Jobs following his gut, had a completely different one. When it came time to make a decision, neither side could agree on what to do, and Apple laid down an ultimatum, go with what they want or risk losing everything. Well, Steve Jobs followed his heart. He didn't back down, and Apple followed suit. They fired him from the company he had founded. He lost his job, his career, and his reputation. Decades later, he would say, I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Wherever you look in the human story, you will find that success and happiness all, they stem from an individual's ability to follow their heart. 
But how do you do that? When I was diagnosed, uh, my family and I were faced with a decision that would determine my very survival. And it was in that moment that I discovered the secret to following my own heart. And it's a secret that you can use to follow your own heart as well. All you have to do is one thing. Plan your funeral. Let me explain. When we were told I needed a bone marrow transplant, at the time there were only a handful of places in the country to consider having it done. Through a process of elimination, we narrowed it down to two hospitals, one in Boston, near my hometown, and the other in Seattle, on the other side of the country. On paper, and by logic alone, the choices were nearly identical, and yet my survival depended on us making the right choice. How were we to know what the right choice was? Upon learning that whatever our choice was, I had a 50% chance of survival, our family priest suggested that we prepare for all of the outcomes, and he and I sat down to plan my funeral. I was 18 years old. I was a senior in high school. We picked the church, the readers, the readings. We even, <clears throat> we even spoke about what my eulogy would sound like and where I would be buried. It was as real as it gets. We really didn't know if I would survive. But it was in that moment that something incredible happened. Suddenly, deep in my subconscious, the only thing that mattered to me was listening to this inner voice. And the voice got so loud, it was as though it was speaking to me through a loudspeaker. All that mattered to me was making sure that this voice was being heard and followed. All of my heart's desires had become crystal clear. We finished the planning for the funeral, and a few days later, my family and I gathered to make the decision between those two hospitals, only something had changed. Now, I had this amazing new ability to hear what my heart wanted me to do, and I had this newfound courage to follow it. Armed with that new confidence, we chose the hospital in Seattle, a seemingly illogical one because it was on the other side of the country, away from everyone and everything that we knew. But it turns out it was the right choice. Today, 24 years later, I'm blessed to be here on the stage sharing my story with you today as a cancer survivor. <laughs> but here's what's really incredible. Had the worst happened, and had the priest needed to say the funeral that he and I had planned together, that would have been just as beautiful. Because we entered that moment with a clarity of purpose that brought us peace and happiness. There was no room for regret because no matter the outcome, our heart had made the decision for us. I know the idea of planning your funeral, it's a heavy one. But the realization of our place in this world, the idea that all of this is temporary, can become a lens through which matters of the heart are most easily viewed. Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Aristotle, they all discovered how terrifying following your heart can actually be. But when you force yourself, those are the moments that, that this tool can become the most useful. When you force yourself, to contemplate how fleeting this life can be, your subconscious gains the freedom to motivate you to achieve your deepest desires. What once seemed terrifying will suddenly seem exhilarating. So let me place you with this challenge. The next time you aren't sure what your heart wants you to do on a decision you have to make, maybe you're not sure whether to take a, to take a new job, maybe you're not sure whether to marry your partner or move to a new city, whatever it is, when you need to know what your heart wants, plan your funeral, sit down, take a moment, and in true silence and solitude, envision the day. Don't just wonder out loud, I wonder who would come to my funeral or say, this will happen someday, but actually plan the funeral itself. Take a pen, write down the details. Consider it as though it were one month from today. I promise if you try this with uh, seriousness, something incredible will happen. You'll realize that when you really are at the end, you'll want to know that you heard and followed yourself. Your subconscious, your heart, your gut will suddenly become much louder. And after this exercise, when you come back to the present, you'll find your subconscious remains a little bit louder, your courage a little bit stronger, and you'll be that much more motivated to do whatever it is that your heart wants you to do. And armed with that clarity of purpose and the certainty to act, you will be more at peace, 
more confident, and in a happier place as a result. I promise you, if you can move forward from today, making your life choices, having listened to your own heart, you will have found an inner happiness that transcends any outcome, even if it is your end. Now, let's plan your funeral. <laughs>